maybe people don't like talking about finance, but I love this topic of finance. Not that I like getting into spreadsheets or, or the QuickBooks, but Jason Medley says this all the time, right? Like, you know, gaining money is, uh, what is it? Gaining money is a, dis is a skill. Keeping money is a discipline. Absolutely. And not enough people talk about that part because it's so easy. You're not tracking it. It just... Watch it go right back out or right out the back door. So what are you doing to get good at your financials? So we made a commitment, you know, once we decided to really get serious about the growth of the business, we made a commitment to bring on a fractional CFO. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'll, I'll lean back on my corporate experience. When, when I, you know, talked to some of the operators and um, our business at the time when I came on board, I'm like, hey, what's the budget look like? Budget? Yeah, we made X last year. Okay, let me. Uh, what's the forecast? We're gonna make more. <laughs> How much more? A lot. Okay. So, um, so that the, sounds like every conversation we have. <laughs> it, it should be right. Um, we're gonna get leverage. Where we just are. Um, so we get pretty serious about building out a, a budget. Mm -hmm. And if you ask my leadership team, um, I very clearly shared in our last L10 what a budget is, mm -hmm. and it's a commitment. A budget is a commitment from the leadership team to the business. Okay. So we are going to spend this much every single month. Um, and if we don't, we're going to make a, we're going to make a rational business decision mm -hmm. based on metrics. And we'll talk about that's the other part of a good finance team, right? Mm -hmm. Providing the data on which levers to pull. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to make our numbers. You know, I'm not a guy who misses my number. All right. Never have been. Don't plan to start now. Yeah. For no other, I mean, we talk about all the bad things that come with that mentality, but mm -hmm. we will not miss our numbers. That's yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Because I'm committed not to mark necessarily, but today I think we're at 30 employees. Living into that budget ensures that 30 families are going to have the income that we told them when we hired them. Mm -hmm. That's pretty important. That's the level of commitment. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that's often overlooked. It's like, yeah, we want to get all these people. We want to hire, we want to scale, but there's... A responsibility, right? Like for us as business owners, that we we're making a commitment to take care of somebody, right? It's not like uh, there weren't other opportunities, other places for them to work. We made a promise to somebody that if you do good work, your job is safe. I my first leadership role in corporate America, I'll never forget this ever. Um, I was like four weeks in, just moved my family from. Columbia, Missouri, up to Kansas City. And um, the company was not doing well. And they said, hey, congratulations, kid, because I was a kid at the time. Um, you need to lay off 11 people. I'm like, how do I do it? They're like, you tell them that they no longer work here. I didn't know these people from Adam. Yeah. And I sat in my office with HR, who was like, Haha, I'm not doing a damn thing here. I'm just making sure you don't say anything illegal. Um, and I had to lay off 11 people and it stuck with me in the most meaningful way that if I ever had control over that, which mm -hmm. I did because I had a budget from there on out, mm -hmm. uh, I was never going to do it again. So these are people that you had to let go, not for anything they did wrong. It was just the company was mismanaged. We were not going to make our budget number at the top. CEO down just said, you know. Labor was a big expense line there. The easiest way to do it was cut expense. Yeah, which is the unfortunate way things are done in the corporation level. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah, when you got shareholders and you got accountability and you got hit quarterly earnings and this yeah. and that, that's a crappy part. A big, big corporations. But we fortunately we don't have to do that. No, uh, n nor do I ever intend to. Yeah. Um. You know. And again, if you know all of your levers and you know, you have a bad quarter or whatever, uh, hopefully you pull a different lever. Mm -hmm. Um. But no, I, I mean, we make a commitment, Steve, every time we hire somebody, um, you know, as we grow, people will not get to know me well. Um, those people who do know me well, I mean, that, that's like my driver. Yeah. Um, making money, fine, fun, don't get me wrong, happy to provide for my family. But being able to provide opportunity for really good people, Yeah, that's exciting. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things I didn't realize I would enjoy. So, you know, when I first opened up my brokerage many, many years ago, I did it for two reasons. A, I was tired of having a broker review all my advertising because <laughs> legally that's what's required. 
and B, I was tired of paying him a percentage of my uh, commissions, right. right? Then you learn when you open up own brokerage. Don't do that, guys, if you guys are listening. It costs more to own a brokerage than it costs to pay a split. <laughs> However, um, taking care of people, hiring people, coaching them up, watching them grow, yeah. live a better life, be better off financially, is so incredibly rewarding. I had no idea, right? Because I opened up my brokerage out of greed. Right. And it's, it's been way better after having people work with us. Dude, it's, you know, there's just, it gets me excited, right? Mm-hmm. There's very few things anymore. You've got basketball. Um, I play a little golf. Very few things I get to be competitive about. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, I'm not competitive about that, but it means so much to get to help, some, help drive value for people. I've got a few things to say that may have some value. And if I can share with somebody and they get something out of it and it impacts their family, um, you know, there's some people on our team that, like, um, I know I can impact the future for them and their children. Yeah. Um, if SBD delivers on its promise, its commitment to them. Right, and that's your responsibility. 100%. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Yep. Uh, one thing you mentioned right now is forecasting. Mm-hmm. Do you want to explain what forecasting means? Um, yeah, it's an interesting topic right now. So when I get home uh, tomorrow morning, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down with our CFO, and we're going to build out the budget for next year. So. Mm-hmm. You know, it's what's the prediction for the future, right? So the budget and the forecasting. If we don't have an end target, you know, if you aim at nothing, you're guaranteed to hit it, mm-hmm. right? I right. know that. Um, so we got to set, you know, got to set a guideline for that. But then we need to figure out, okay, high level, we can call it top line and, you know, rev and expense line and, hey, how, here's what we think drop down is going to be. And that's all fine and good. But in which markets is it going to be turnkeys? Is it going to be flips? What's the revenue projection for each of those? And we will build out a methodical projection for each market. And when we're off, because now we've written it down, huh? we'll make pivots. But yeah, yeah. If, we don't, if we don't start forecasting the business, um, and we can talk about the importance of cash in a business like ours. Right. Um, how's Mark supposed to know which, how much capital to go raise if I don't tell him, hey, we're going to buy 400 houses next year, Mark. We're going to get through... We'll get rehab up to about 270 um, of those, and we're going to open up another office and this and this and this. Is he just going to shake a tree and find another four million bucks? You can do that when you're doing a couple of deals. You cannot do that when you're doing a couple hundred deals. We found you could pro- you could do that up to a hundred deals. Yeah. So when you're forecasting, then you're forecasting for the year. You're projecting for the year. Yes. Got it. I'm only asking this because for us as our as our organization. We forecast about 30 days ahead. And all we're forecasting is not this kind of like how much money we're going to need. All our forecasting is what are our bank balances going to look like in 30 days? Because for me, I know, you know, reading Profit First, mm-hmm. um, Scaling Up. Yep. And then that was, book. And then Keith Cunningham's the, the, ultimate blueprint, the Ultimate Blueprint for Insanely Successful Business. And the things that I learned from those books is financials. And again, it's nerdy. It's not fun. But it's so important. Um, for me, it was a long, it took nine or 10 years to actually be able to look at a balance sheet and a PL. It took 10 years, way too long. Right. But then we got to a point where not only could we look at our balance sheets and PLs, but now we can project what the bank balance is going to be in 30 days, right? Because we know what our expenses are going to be for the next 30 right. days. We know what our revenue is going to be in the next 30 days. And right. we know what our cost of sales as well, based off that revenue. Yeah. And now we know exactly what our bank balance is going to look in 30 days. Man, the confidence in the decisions you can make when you project what you're going to have in 30 days versus, I don't know where my money's going. Dude, well, let me say this. If, if you don't nerd out over that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. you should not scale. If we're talking about scaling up and you don't get excited to know your numbers, yeah. uh, or at least have somebody on your team that does it, but as an owner, All right. you better. <laughs> yeah. Right, you you got you got all these mouths to feed. If you don't get excited about that, I would argue you shouldn't do it. Yeah, no, that's I mean, a good point. you know, I know that sounds really direct, and it's not at you, Steve. I'm just saying in general, man, that's where the that's where this whole thing is mm-hmm. is in those numbers. There's a yeah. lot of activity, but right. they generate an outcome. Yeah, and if you're not tracking or predicting it, and again, we, I can tell you the the stories of what we've gone through over the last. Gosh, you know, 18 months since we put our foot 
pretty hard down and you know mark will say we've been hovering over the accelerator pedal and now we're hitting it mm -hmm. um he and i must have been in separate cars because <laughs> uh, i felt like we've had it down for a while now for him it felt like they were he was it wasn't going fast enough well yeah <laughs> for you and, I, and I wasn't driving right and all that but in fact hurry up yeah he's a backseat driver yeah um <laughs> it's fine that's what the integrators deal with um but no, man, I, you know, you have to be able to project these things. And, and if it's a cash intensive business or marketing intensive or whatever it is, um, if you don't know your numbers, I, I don't know how you're going to get where you want to go. And you don't even know where you want to go, would yeah. be my argument. And that's when people wake up uh, on the other side. You know, one of the things that Mark and I talk about, businesses that are scaling don't often go out of business. They grow out of business. Mm -hmm. And that's a strict relationship on the third thing we should talk about, which is cash. Yeah. You know, you say you love scaling up. Um, um, that's one of the four components of that book, cash. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I used to hate having cash in my accounts. Now I'm really happy. Because you wanted to leverage it? <laughs> well, no, because when the recession occurred, not recession, when COVID struck, I did not lose sleep. Like, yeah. Right? Like, we've been prepared for this. You know, we have cash reserves. Cash reserves. Probably first. Profit first, right? But prior to those financial books, right? Money comes in, where can I invest it? Where can I drop it, right? This idea of grind, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. As money comes in, we got to invest it somewhere else or we got to spend it in one way or another. And the financial maturity that comes from reading those books really shifted the mindset and really, again, get, I didn't lose any sleep when COVID struck. Not many business owners can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to fall in love with the numbers. You you gotta you gotta read those books. I mean, you nailed scaling up is a fantastic uh, book. I mean, it literally, um, if you walk into my or Mark's office, I guarantee it's sitting within two feet of our computer. Yeah, um, because it's so critical. And we got to meet one of the authors, right? Um, Howard Leaky Bucket guy. What was his last uh, name? Howard Shore. Howard uh, Shore. Yeah. And yeah, we got to meet one of the authors. Um, yeah, I mean, fantastic book, the Gazelle Group. Um, yeah, I mean, we we literally. We are living that book. I had, so, you know, again, we're talking about all these great things that we're doing well now. Uh, the only reason we're doing them well is because we did them poorly um, <laughs> for a while, felt the pain and decided the pain sucked. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd read Scaling Up, um, Mark's read it, but as we are scaling, now we're feeling some of those things. And mm -hmm. of course, now we're, you know, we're responding quickly and fixing it, but yeah.